Hello, I'm Dale Hayden, Project Manager for the Community Health Worker Skills Training Program at Bristol Community College. Tonight is the last night of the students' final class. Right, currently they are presenting their final presentations before their graduation at 7 p.m. Talk about it much, he's a little bit more open. I came down here myself and I live at VTH right now. I live at the Transitional House. And I got uh, just a little bit more before I finish um, for my, I, I'll get my associates this year and then I'm on to the nursing program. Okay. So, you know. Once again, it's only because of I didn't know what was out there for me. And somebody said, Go to, the, go to the VA and see what benefits are there for you. And because the economy was crashing and I went to the VA and I was on unemployment, the vet rep said they have a VRAP program that's a college funding. And next thing you know, I was in VCC getting a degree. I never thought I'd go back to school. <laughs> Hello. So with that, you know, there's, there's all sorts of information um, for community health workers online. If you're looking for stuff on homelessness and services, to provide and it's out there just have to as work is you know be willing to put me up and find it and um, spread the news with that yeah don't <laughs> I would just like to say you know we talked a lot about cultural sensitivity and we had a great uh, I think raising of awareness with David and Laura being here talking about veterans but how many of us have really thought about homelessness because we've all had that perception in our heads of the person who's homeless, right? And you just if you haven't had a lot of experience dealing with someone who's homeless, and now we hear very moving stories from folks who lived it and who have come out of it. So don't forget. And I, I remember doing child welfare, driving through the streets of Champaign, Illinois, looking at people that were, you know, sort of local legends in the community who were always out on the streets and wondering how did their lives start. Were they welcomed into their families when they were born? Were they children who were wanted? What happened in their lives that caused them to wind up on the streets? And the reality is you don't know until you look past the fact that somebody who wants to be clean can't find a shower, okay? So don't forget that. In order to give all our presenters an opportunity to present, excellent, excellent, and thank you. The tobacco industry, targeted youth, Jamie and Marissa, and David. And this is my team here, and we came together to address the issue of tobacco industries targeting youth and the fact that there is a gap in services um, and outreach and prevention for young adults. Um, they don't have access to smoking cessation because of their age. And so we're trying to build a coalition and get more people involved and educate people so they can be a part of our initiative, which is to limit um, youth smoking and secondhand smoke exposure. So this was the uh, logo we designed, teens engaged in quitting smoking together ensuring that every young tobacco user has access to effective cessation and intervention. To build a coalition of parents, other uh, community folks, and of course children to engage them into the, um, the information. And step one is uh, do a coalition, get the uh, people, guidance counselors in the schools, YMCA, nonprofit, boys and girls clubs, um, I don't know what the street this seat is. Oh, that's, that's the, the website. website. Yeah. Uh, not on tobacco. Bethany Torre. This smoking, smoking yeah. is big bucks yeah. for the tobacco industry, but it's big bucks for health care and for anybody that's going to be happy to go through any cancer therapy or such. Thank you, Maritza. Now, a lot of homeless people that we deal with, parents, when we work for the Head Start program, they are placed in motels. And in motels, you don't have access to a stove, you don't have a lot of access to anything. So they have to um, use the microwave for cooking. Now, you know, you think, okay, microwave, you know, frozen stuff. There's actually a lot of meals that you can do in the microwave that are healthy and nutritious for everybody. Kids, moms, dads. Um, me and Krista actually went to one not too long ago, um, a few months back, where they had it at a church and um, they had the Johnson's and Wales students come in and actually do hands-on demonstration for people that were homeless 
Um, and they demonstrated to them how they can make a healthy meal even though they were using microwaves. And I did provide um, some recipes to Scott and Deb Russell. Hopefully we'll they can those. We'll email those out for you. Please. Next, we have Youth Education on HIV Prevention with Leonard, Linda May, Chana, and Jenny. I'm Chana Gnad, and um, all that information that we researched and everything, we um, made this booklet, like a pamphlet. Um, thank you. Um, so, my team and I have gone through hours of research and statistics and fact sheets, websites, and visited all the nearby facilities that specialize in treating individuals who have been diagnosed with HIV or individuals who wanted to be tested. I grabbed pamphlets from all these places, went over them with my team. All the things these pamphlets didn't say and all the things they did, my team and I put front cover to find an informative table of contents. The pamphlet begins with what is the disease, how do you get it, what are the stages of infection, risk factors, if one partner is infected, signs and symptoms, physical changes to be aware of, why lab tests are important, where to get tested, and how to get help. We have come a long way, but we haven't stamped it out completely. Let's all do our part and help stamp out HIV. Thank you. Hi, I'm Beverly. Hey, this is Vilya and Anna, and we're talking about teen pregnancy <laughs> prevention. And for me, I'm um, okay. So, but real quickly, I remember being a junior in high school. <laughs> I remember being a junior in high school, and I had a friend that we grew up together. We started school together in kindergarten. And we used to sing the best friend song. But anyway, <laughs> um, so we were juniors in high school. And I remember one day coming to school, she was at her locker. And her face was just beat red. And she's like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm And she was just crying. I was like, calm down. Just breathe. What's the matter? She said, I think I'm pregnant. I think I'm pregnant. Mm -hmm. And she said, my mother's going to kill me. My father's going to kill me. I don't know what I'm going to do. They said, OK, just breathe. Just breathe. It's OK. You know, um, that didn't pass well not yet. And so long story short, a couple of days later, she came back and she said, my friend is here and I'm happy and I'm not pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, great, great, but you know what? You know, um, you gotta be careful. You have to be careful. The very next month, she was pregnant. Oh. The very next month, she, the main thing that we would want to do is go into the schools. Um, we would first speak to the school principals and get permission and, and show them the statistics, different issues that are going on in the community. <laughs> Five more minutes. We got our last group. Five minutes. Right, yeah. <laughs> just define uh, medical reconciliation. It's just basically the formal process for creating the most accurate list possible of a patient's current medications. And uh, this process is done to avoid medication errors such as omission, duplication, and uh, dosing errors and, and drug interactions. So when I was kind of surprised to find out as a healthcare worker for the long term that. They, they estimate that about 20% of these errors are actually happen within an institution itself, whether it be a hospital, a clinic, uh, express care, at least 20%, and a certain percentage of those can be cause harm to the, to the patient. Uh, so the goal from anybody? Well, you pretty much said everything. I just would like to, <laughs> just would like to apologize uh, while I was doing this on the computer and, and the pressing enter and it gets stuck, so I end up having a hundred pages. <laughs> so I start deleting things, I end up deleting the percentage that you should have there. Yes, sir. But that's pretty much what we have to say. We believe that CHWs uh, will be essential to medical <clears throat> reconciliation. Uh, Carlos. Why don't you just uh, conclude by we have had we have developed some recommendations at the CHW. If you want to include them, fine. If you don't, we can call it a night. Oh, yeah. I had my first day on my new job today as an engineer technician. Woo! I for years to get in the South Coast, but I finally did it.
Christian God, right. and just wrapping up. Right. You know, I, I can would be just tired. like to. Yeah. And wrapping up, I would just like to commend this class for an absolute, unbelievable research presentation, uh, ability to work together. And you know, one of the things I think, speaking for Deborah and I, is how much this class was able to take. A lot of what we talked about in terms of getting statistics, information from the South Coast area, being able to look at health disparities, and being able to come up with, I think, some very sound, well-researched, well-presented ideas about how to begin to address these on a community level, as well as community health workers. And so we applaud you for that. And I'd just like to say, before you apply, um, I love the fact that people chose things that they were passionate about. If you heard in every single story, People had a personal experience, and that's kind of what drove them to it, to it, whether it's professional, personal, whatever. But everyone had a passion, and I love the fact that everybody had different approaches, mm -hmm. different styles, from statistics to the great little box that goes around to the handouts. I, I just, uh, again, I, like you said, I applaud all of you. This was far beyond anything that Scott and I said, and I actually just wrote him a note said, saying, this is awesome, so impressive. Because we didn't expect this. This is way beyond what we expected, and I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Well done.